Now, in our top story tonight, as the elections draw closer in Zimbabwe, the country seems to be desperately gunning for a revival in all the sectors. The Munangagwa administra administration's charm offensive has taken the president around southern Africa and most recently in China to win investors. But the MDC alliance is not only questioning but challenging the leadership. The alliance is an electoral bloc formed between five political parties in December back in August of 2017. Now, most of the member parties are splinters from the original Movement for Democratic Change. They are here and we will be talking to them. They will be contesting the Zimbabwe's 2018 18 harmonized elections. The member parties include the Movement for Democratic Change, Changirai, led by advocate Nelson Chamisa, uh, the Movement for Democratic Change that is led by Walshman Mube, and the People's Democratic Party that is led by Tendai Biti, also Transform Zimbabwe that is led by Mr. Jacob Ngarevume, Zimbabwe People First, also led by Agripa Mutambara. Joining me in studio tonight he is a former Minister of Information, Communication, Technology of Zimbabwe. He is the current MDCT president. But more importantly for today's discussion, he is the MDC Alliance presidential candidate for 2018 uh, Zimbabwe Harmonized Elections Advocate, Nelson Chamisa. Welcome to our studios. Thank you, Audrey. Good evening, uh, viewers. Thank you very much for having me here. Right, a number of issues that we want to talk to before we invite your alliance partners to, of course, be a part of this conversation. They're equally as important. Tied nationalism, we have read about how you have blasted, for lack of a better word, the, the current uh, president, Emerson Munangagwa, saying that um, with regards to his age, he's not in a position to be in touch with the new generation, what is called the millennials. You feel you're in a better position to bridge that gap, as we know that the young ones are the future of any country. Well, I must thank you that uh, you have given us the opportunity to come here and articulate what we stand for. We are not just in opposition to the current government. We represent a proposition of the alternative policies that we believe are going to take Zimbabwe to the next level. Uh, and our platform has been anchored on three pillars. That is transformation, providing opportunity for Zimbabweans, and prosperity. And that is the basis upon which we are campaigning. We are not just opposing for the sake of opposing. But we are coming in with a raft of new policies, new programs, new ideas, new solutions to our country. And we are saying that, uh, yes, President Mlangagwa has done a lot. He did a lot for the liberation of the country, and we salute him for that. But he can't be a hero of two struggles, the struggle for liberation and the struggle for transformation. The struggle for transformation is our struggle as the young people and as the game changers in this uh, very important election. We feel that uh, the task to transform our country uh, belongs to all of us. Right. Let's talk about electoral reforms. I think I've had this, this discussion with you over the phone. Um, I think it should be last week. Ahead of the elections, there needs to be a process that needs to happen in Parliament, I understand, for these electoral reforms to happen. How far have you gone to engage the relevant parties to make sure this is implemented? Yes, I must say that as an alliance, instead of the five parties that you mentioned, we're actually seven parties. And of the seven parties, we've come together to say, uh, as far as we are concerned, we need to terminate once and for all the perennial challenges to disputed elections and um, uh, elections that are not guaranteed in terms of being free, fair, inclusive, and peaceful. Uh, so we've developed a document, what we are calling the Peace Blueprint, which is uh, a plan and environment for credible elections in Zimbabwe. This document has 10 key minimum vitals we are saying have to be put in place in order for this country to be on a permanent path to peace and an irreversible uh, transformation, an irreversible path to real change and also real transformation. For us, we are saying we need to be able to make sure that the voter straw is actually in a manner that is credible and it is accepted by all the parties through a proper audit that is done by all the critical parties. But more importantly also, we are emphasizing the issue of the ballot paper. In 2013, we had a disputed election because the ballot paper uh, printing and all the ink that was used uh, were done uh, nicodemously and behind closed doors without all the parties being involved. So we need transparency in terms of all those aspects. And like I said, we have 10 demands. I may not be able to elucidate on all of them, but these are the critical ones. We are saying we can't even debate on them. Our military, as you know, uh, we're very active and have been very active in the politics of the nation. We want to de-villagize the military and demilitarize the villages, making sure that our military are liberated from 
partisan politics because they are bigger than partisan politics. They have to represent the nation. They are for all of us. And they can't be supporting one party against the other. ZANU-PF is just but a party. It is not the nation. It is not the liberation struggle. So we would want to make sure that our soldiers, our military, are indeed in the barracks defending the nation, not defending one political party. Because the whole essence of going to the liberation struggle was to ensure that we preserve and protect uh, their ballot and not for the bullet to undermine the ballot. Right. I want us to quickly talk about the roadmap to legitimacy and stability in Zimbabwe. Some are saying that the MDC party used to be the moral campus of political parties in Zimbabwe. And this is now being challenged with regards to your ascension to power, um, having called off the MDC Congress um, and issues to do with that process. Well, how, how would you respond to that? Well, we are still the moral campus. We are the part of excellence. We are the part of the people. We are the game in town. And I can tell you that uh, in terms of connecting, in terms of message, in terms of acceptance by the people of Zimbabwe, we are the first ones. Uh, and we continue to be that moral compass in terms of constitutionalism, in terms of rule of law, in terms of a pan-African narrative, and also a patriotic articulation of what we stand for. We have never deviated from our principles, our values. Yes, the Congress is coming next year. You must understand that we hold our Congresses after every five years. What we are grappling with is the demise of our icon, President Dr. Richard Morgan Sangrai. And we have had to deal with the situation of what the Constitution says in the event that the President is not uh, available. And this is what we have done in terms of the Constitution, that you have people saying that you should have a Congress. Life is not just about Congresses. Life is also about respecting the organs, and the organ that is supposed to deal with issues is the National Council. Right. It dealt with the issues. It chose a leader, and the leader is the one who is speaking to you. And I'm very happy that uh, the people are happy. There's no problem within the party. Of course, individuals who probably also want to be part of the leadership who always raise issues. It's part of the transitional issues. Right. Yeah. We're going to talk about uh, Madam Kupe and the challenge of... Uh, of course, the leadership, once again, I understand she's taking it a step further to court how this could threaten the MDC alliance. And for that, for that, we'll invite some of the alliance partners to join me in studio. While we do that, we will also speak to the people that we have opened the phone lines for. I understand we have Robert from Soweto. Good evening to you and uh, welcome to the show. What are your comments? Good morning, Madam. How are you? Very well. Uh, please go ahead. Good. Uh, I would want to ask uh, His Excellence, our President in waiting. Uh, about the diaspora vote because that is very crucial as well. Okay, diaspora vote will touch on that. There was an MDC alliance here in South Africa, in Tembisa. The alliance partners will furnish us with those details. Robert, thank you so much for calling in. Shadrach and Limpopo, we see you. What is your comment or question? I wanted to ask uh, uh, the president uh, about here. Uh, uh, I mean, what he's going to do to deal with um, uh, many Zimbabweans who are in South Africa um, to make sure that they are going also to participate in elections because um, we, we cannot ignore the number of uh, Zimbabweans that are in South Africa. Vast of them are from Limpopo, others are in Johannesburg. But what, what is the role from the party point of view? Um, they are going to play to ensure that Zimbabweans are mobilized to go and participate in uh, international elections. All right, thank you for that comment. That's Shadrick from Limpopo. I'll just quickly pose those questions to uh, the presidential candidate of the MDC Alliance very quickly as we get the Alliance partners all mic'd up so we can have a word with them. The issue of the diaspora vote is a very important one. Millions of Zimbabweans that are not, not only in South Africa but, you know, in Southern Africa that are hoping to be a part of this democratic process. Obviously, it's not going to happen in the individual countries. How do you mobilize for people to go back, go back home and vote? Well, that's precisely our point, Audrey. We have emphasized the point on our 10 peace demands. We have said that the issue of the diaspora vote is one of the most important ones. Why? Because we are guided by international statutes. We are guided by the study guidelines on elections. It's very clear that Zimbabwe is an exception. It's the only country where the diaspora vote is not being respected. You go to South Africa, you go to Malawi, Zambia, and all other African uh, countries. They have a way of providing for the diaspora voting uh, to be enabled. In fact, we have over 4 million Zimbabweans who are in the diaspora. They have not been accounted for. Of course, government 
uh, insists that those who work for government are the only ones who are supposed to uh, vote. But we have diasporans who have been contributing in terms of na the national fiscals, in terms of revenue, in terms of remittances. You can't have uh, taxation without representation. They also have to be represented. Yeah, but that sounds like a wish list, Mr. Chamisa, Advocate Chamisa, because it appears, uh, obviously, there's no way there's going to be an, a diaspora vote. Those, that is not going to happen. Not People have to be mobilized to go back home. Yes, they have to be mobilized, and they are already mobilized. What mobilizes them is their desire and national interest to make sure that they contribute to the well-being of their country. And I must say that there are two issues there. One is what we are pushing through the political processes within Parliament to enable, because we have some reform process that is underway, one to enable diasporans to be able to vote, because they cannot be less uh, Zimbabweans just because they are out of the country. Okay, I'm going to have to you know, ask you to give us uh, a break mm -hmm. there. We have another caller. We'll come back to you very quickly. I want to introduce one of the alliance partners. Very good evening to you. So people say the alliance partners are very invisible uh, within the MDC alliance. I want to give you this opportunity to introduce yourself to our viewers. Sure. Um, thank you very much for having me tonight. Um, I'm Jacob Ngaru Vume, uh, president of Transform Zimbabwe, one of the seven political parties who make up the MDC alliance. Right. Um, we are visible. We are working together with uh, the seven different political players in the alliance. And the, reasons, uh, the reason, in fact, we are working together is because we each have contributed greatly to the opposition political movement in the country. And we saw it fit that we can come together with all the various, um, with all the various political parties and giving, putting on the table our abilities you know, the value systems that we represent and our membership also. So we are all together uh, working uh, with the MDCT in this alliance because we are making a contribution to the alliance and we are very clear about that. And each of us uh, is very happy about the way we are working in the alliance. Okay, talk to us about the rally that ha happened over the weekend. What was the message they <coughs> found? How was the reception from the people that came through? Um, we, our whole idea is to say if you are in the diaspora, it doesn't, it doesn't mean that you are a lesser Zimbabwean than the rest of us in the country. So we wanted to reach out to Zimbab <coughs> Zimbabweans in the diaspora so that we speak about the alliance and also we speak about the election that is coming up soon. One of the key issues is actually what the alliance president was talking about, the mobilization of the people in the diaspora to go back and register to vote and also to make sure that uh, when voting comes, they are able to vote. Is their right? is their right as citizens to be able to participate in our electoral processes. And that's the message we're pushing to them. And also what we will do uh, when we are elected into government uh, for the people, I mean for Zimbabweans who are in the diaspora. And that message was well accepted by Zimbabweans in the diaspora. They are so much eager to come back home. And this is precisely what we are doing to enable that they come home after the alliance wins. Uh, at the coming elections. Right, let's take the voice to the people. Our phone lines are open once again. We have uh, Mkron DC from Johannesburg. Thank you for calling us. Uh, please share your view. Yeah, well, how are you? Very well, thank you, sir. Please go ahead. I'm fine. Ma'am, I just want to ask the, our leadership there, what are they going to do with the issue of the violence, political violence, which we seem being carried over from Zane PF? I'm really worried about that. Thank you. In view, in view of what happened uh, in the during the burial of Mugen uh, Tsongirai and what happened in Blawayo. Noted. Thank you for your contribution. We'll take back to back Simon from Benoni. Good evening to you, Simon. Are you still with us? Okay. Well, uh, still, are you? Yes, please, Simon. Please go ahead. Yes. Um. I, I just want. To, yes. I'm. I'm here. I just want to. To to ask uh, Nelson on 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 something. Um, it it seems as if the MDC is riding on people's feelings, and there isn't much discussion around the policies and to conscientize the nation about what MDC stands for and articulating those policies, um, especially during rallies, so that. Every, each and every Zimbabwean, even those who are in the rural areas, can be enlightened in terms of what is the policy framework and where we are going. The issue which is being spoken about is to say, 
the reason why we don't have investors is because they don't have confidence. But for investors to have confidence, they look at the police framework, and that police framework is not being discussed. So what is being done? Are we going to see that further in, 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 more, um, yeah, in more rallies coming to see policies being discussed to the last dot, not to say we cannot give further details like you did in Blawai, you said, I cannot go into details, which is not fair for us. We are not voting for, for, for people. We are voting for policies that will take Zimbabwe forward. What is Simon, thank you so that? much for that. We have to manage time. I'm sure your point has been taken. And uh, one of our callers, JP Kumalo, as well, will take your question before we pose it to the panel. JP Kumalo, are you with us? Okay, I suppose we'll try and get a hold of him and please phone him back so we can hear his views. Um, I'll come to you, Advocate Chami. So there's issues to do with the violence that uh, characterized the funeral of the, of the late um, Morgan Changirai. Have that been curtailed? And if so, how do you ensure the electorate, the nation, that this will never happen again going forward, particularly now as we're getting so close to the polls? Precisely, yes. Um, I must admit that um, violence has been part of the national uh, culture and the national psyche of our politics. And we need to deal with that in a very radical way. Uh, partly it is because of an inherited um, uh, experience on account of politics at the hands of ZANU-PF, but also because our politics has not been politics of ideas. So we need to move from that old dispensation of engaging physically to that dispensation of engaging on issues, on ideas, on policies. And that is what I'm ushering in. Uh, particularly in the context of the MDC, we have been very clear to say we need to dismantle uh, the relics and manifestations of ZANU-PF culture of violence. We have been victims of violence as MDC, state-sponsored in some cases violence, but also in some cases partisan violence at the hands of ZANU-PF. So, yes, I can still visibly see your scar on your forehead there that obviously happened during one of those very unfortunate times. Do you think you did enough to get accountability with regards to the violence that happened at that very unfortunate time for the MDC? Indeed, we have done a lot. Uh, in fact, we have left no stone unturned. We have done everything within our power. We lodged a, a commission of inquiry, which commission of inquiry also brought some very startling revelations that the violence that we saw at President Changrai's uh, burial or funeral was actually violence coming from our colleagues in ZANU-PF who planted urgent provocateurs to try and embarrass certain of our leaders. It's something that we have taken up with the police and it's something that we have not taken lightly. Even within the party, those people whom we have found to be associated, even as they were being mobilized by those uh, uh, provocateurs, are certainly going to be dealt with. In fact, we've already begun the process. Yeah. Well, ZANU-PF is not here to answer for themselves, but of course we always give them an opportunity for a right to reply. Mr. Ngarivo made the issue of policy framework. The electorate is saying <coughs> we need to hear more of that. You are playing on people's emotions, which I suppose you can't really separate the two, but when it comes to tangible bread and butter issues, where, where do you stand with issues like the, um, the cash crisis in Zimbabwe, to name a few issues that are, people are battling with on the ground? Sure. Um, I think um, it has been very in all our meetings and rallies, which even the Alliance President has been addressing, I think he has been articulating on issues to do with police. And, of course, what we have to sell as an alliance is what we will do for the people of Zimbabwe. And we've been very clear on that. You know, we've got a very strong and sound uh, economic policy, which will be launched, I understand, in the next um, two weeks or so, which we are launching. We're also launching a manifesto as an alliance. And there's been huge build-up and momentum as alliance partners in contributing towards our policy document. And I'm very glad that we have one of the best policy documents that has ever been seen in the country and that will be launched and we are discussing about it and we'll make sure that when it is uh, officially launched and then every Zimbabwean will have an opportunity to look at it, critique it and weigh us against what we are offering to them. But be that as it may, already we've been talking a lot about police, what we'll do to end the economic, I mean, the economic crisis the people of Zimbabwe find themselves in. We've been talking about how to deal with the cash crisis, we've been 
talking about how to deal with the infrastructure, the state of infrastructure in the country. And I think it's on record that we've been talking about all those issues. And we will continue to talk about all those issues because those are the pertinent issues that the people of Zimbabwe are looking at. And we are, we, we are glad that we are responding to uh, the expectations of the people of Zimbabwe. All right, Mr. Chamisa, any policies you want to articulate uh, for our viewers very quickly? Issues that really touch to the core of a Zimbabwean who's on the ground and who's really just trying to make ends meet. That's fine. Um, we, we, we are very conscious of the fact that we need to state the what and how and the when of our policies. But we are also quite mindful of the fact that the proclamation of the date of the election has not been done. We know our colleagues in ZANU-PF are very good at manipulating our policies. They've done so through President Mnangagwa, who has literally uh, been copying and pasting our policies. Not that we are worried if it is for the good of the country, we really appreciate it. But we are also conscious that we need to launch our policy blueprint. And in that blueprint, we have five fundamental issues that we are focusing on. First thing is the issue of governance, how we are going to change the structure, infrastructure, and culture of governance. Number two is the economic uh, blueprint in terms of how we are going to create jobs, how we are going to make sure that we induce macroeconomic stability. We deal with the issue of the current reform within the country, the fiscal reforms and uh, the monetary reforms that are going to be instituted. Mm -hmm. uh, the issue of making sure that there's technology transfer within our market and most importantly, entrepreneurship and dealing with corruption. The third issue is the issue of our social structure intervention. What we are going to do with the people with disabilities, the elderly pensioners, we have lost their money. What we are going to be doing, we are already clear on those policies. And we are going to be articulating in our rallies to come. Uh, fourth issue is the issue of infrastructure. We are very clear. Seek you first, the kingdom of infrastructure. All things will then fall in place. We need our transport, we need our energy, we need our power, we need our water, we need housing. Those are the issues we are focusing on. And of course, in detail, we have indicated what we are going to do. Last but not least is the issue of making sure that we... Uh, get Zimbabwe back into the family of nations in terms of international relations, the flag following trade, and also making sure that we have our dollar where our interests are. Those are the five fundamental pillars we are following in terms of our smart programs, which is a sustainable and measurable agenda for real transformation. We have a fantastic program, and we are so proud of it, like what President Garvume said. That program is going to be launched. Once we have launched the program, we have a rollout and popularization of our popular version of what we stand for. So yes, policies are there, are coming. Like I said, we are not just an opposition. We are a proposition of the alternative. With three months to go, we're hoping that manifesto will be out and of course we'll invite you back in studio so we can go through some of those policies. Gentlemen, thank you so much for speaking to us tonight. It has been such a pleasure. Most appreciated. Thank you. And for you at home for joining in the conversation, thank you so much for participating. This has been Africa Tonight with myself, Audrey Chimwanda. Asante Sana.